Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1986 film Spookies, which if you want this Blu-ray, get a good look at it. Get a good look at the back. Get a good look at the inside. Some good artwork on this. Um, so if you want this Blu-ray, it's available through Vinegar Syndrome. I bought this just kind of on a whim because when I bought it, it was a new release. And I had heard some rumblings in the kind of horror underground about Spookies and the kind of storied past that it had. But I hadn't dug into that past until I sat down, well, a bit before I sat down to uh, watch this movie in anticipation of this review. And uh, very glad I own this. Very glad I've seen this. Especially glad I own this because there are two feature-length documentaries on here. One is kind of the documentary of all the issues that went on with the film, and then the other one is kind of like a making-of documentary, and they're feature-length, which is really cool. So I haven't watched those yet because I just watched the actual film for the first time, so I do plan on watching the documentaries on here, and there are commentary tracks, too, for the documentaries and for the film. There's a lot that I'm going to want to dig into with this Blu-ray, so this was well worth the purchase, in my opinion. Now, that said, if you have not seen Spooky's spoilers going on in this, although it really won't spoil much because it's it's one of those movies that, like, there's no real point to it. It's just, like, a movie to be a movie, which, you know, in the 80s, there were a lot of horror movies that were just made to because they were movies, you know, for entertainment value. Now, that said, there is a good movie, well, good as in entertaining. There's a very cool, entertaining movie buried within this film. Actually, it would be pretty easy to pull it out. Basically, they need to take certain portions of the film, just edit them out, have it be maybe about an hour-long film, and it would be way more succinct, way more interesting, it would hold your attention a lot better, and just more cohesive and fun, to be honest. So, real quick, okay, so I'll get into this stuff. Directed by Jeannie Joseph, which, by the way, what the hell... What the hell? Um, uh, what the hell, Genie? That's all I got to say. I'll get further into that. So, directed by Genie Joseph, who also did the film Mindbenders, Thomas Doran and Brendan Faulkner, who did Killer Dead. Now, Thomas, uh, uh, Thomas Doran and Brendan Faulkner were the original directors for this film. They did the stuff I liked. Uh, Genie Joseph did the stuff that is garbage. So, what the hell, Genie? Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about why that happened, although I can't do all of it. Written by Doran F and Faulkner, who also wrote Killer Dead, Anne Burgund. What the hell, Anne Burgund? That's another person. What the hell? She wrote the stuff for, like, the new stuff put in. It's so bad. Uh, she went on to be a producer for the Jim Carrey film The Mask, by the way, which is interesting. And uh, Frank Farrell, who ended up becoming the producer on... Street Trash, which, man, I need to watch Street Trash and do a review for that. I special place in my heart for that film. It's terrible, but it's awesome. I love it. So this actually ended up having a limited theatrical release, and then it was also, it went to video, and then it was also shown a few times on the USA Network, which, is the USA Network even still around? I don't know. It was originally called Twisted Souls, but the financier for this film actually... The financier, probably the biggest problem with this film. Uh, he thought that he wanted the this, the name to be something similar to the Goonies. Because, hey, that worked for the Goonies. Which is weird. So, they came up with Spookies. Which, you know what? I'm fine. I'm fine with uh, Spookies. Twisted Souls, Spookies. It didn't really matter to me. Uh, <laughs> but the financier was the biggest problem. Because he hired a cast and crew... They did almost 90% of the film, and then he fired them, and then got another cast and crew who was supposed to finish the film. Now, when that new cast and crew got it, it was like 90% done anyway, so when you watch the film, it definitely feels like there are pieces just, like, shoehorned into it all throughout the film, and that's literally what happened. Like, there was another concept for the film there... And then the new people came in. They used some of that. Actually, I mean, they used a good amount of like that initial concept. But they added a lot of stuff that didn't need to be there. A lot of stuff that's very distracting. A lot of stuff that's idiotic and just pure stupidity. And that's what bogs the film down. That's what takes you out of things. That That's what's garbage about this. 
Now, apparently this financier is kind of an eccentric, weird type person. And this goes to one of the issues that a lot of people end up having with especially independent film when they need to find people to fund it, their filmmaking is that you can end up with people who aren't happy with being like, here, here's the money, do your creative thing. You, they they want to get too involved. They're like, that's my money, so I want to tell you how to do the film, even though I'm not a filmmaker. They just want to feel like they're a filmmaker. They just don't want the money funding your vision and your creativity to be enough. Like They just want to stick their hands in there and do stuff. So apparently that's the way this finance year was. And it ended up leading to a series of arguments, and then that's when things just came to a head, and he just fired everyone. And then apparently found some people who were in the porn industry to talk to, who were like, "Hey, we could, uh, you know, take care of the rest of this." And they convinced him. And uh, yeah, now I will say that those ad the additional stuff that was added to the film, there's like one thing in particular, I, in particular, I actually like that was added to the film, which was the, um, the witch, the witch portion in like the basement cave. That was actually cool. That was really cool. But other than that, I thought it was all terrible, but it looked good. Like they did a good job actually shooting their stuff they put in it, but the story was terrible. The acting was, I mean, none of the acting in this overall is all that great, but the story was terrible. It felt like they shoehorned in a lot of stuff and the cat man, like, Ann and Jeannie, what the hell with this flamboyantly dre dressed cat man with a freaking hook for one of its hands? The majority of what that character does throughout the film and excessively is walk around and listen at doors and like just touch the door handle and just just like creeps around this house the entire film means nothing pretty much to the film until the very end, which still means nothing. It's a character for no reason. Someone had a crazy hard-on for the concept of this cat man, and it makes no sense. It's awful. It's horrible. And that's the thing I hate the most about this film. I hate the sorcerer and his uh, bride, that whole concept. That's terrible, but it's not annoying like the flamboyantly dressed hook-handed cat man dude who keeps making purring noises and little meow like cat noises it's off-putting it's terrible it's ugh, genie and ann you suck you suck terrible terrible and the financier i forget what his name is also sucks that would because the original stuff like you can see what the original stuff was you see the original concept and a lot of the original concept was putting a lot of cool practical effects stuff in there and just basically having it be a bunch of people who show up at a house and there's creepy weird stuff going on and they kind of realize at some point that there was a sorcerer in the house and it's not so much about that it's light on story but the whole concept is just exploring the house and having these crazy things come up with cool practical effects that's enough like for the entertainment value, that's enough. But then it gets bogged down by all that garbage that was added after the fact. And it's just, it's a shame. It really is a shame. And that's why I say they should do like a definitive cut of this that was just the original stuff. Because it would be a lot better. Even though it would only be like an hour long, maybe. It would still be a lot better. Anyway, I went off on a diatribe. So, I haven't seen the documentary about like the issues with it yet. But I did read um like interviews an article and interviews with a bunch of the people involved with the film on both crews uh through this website called the dissolve it's just the dissolve.com so go to that website and read that it's something <laughs> and you should definitely read it it gives you a lot of backstory on all the crazy stuff that went on with that with that film so um, the, I'll tell you exactly what portions were added by the new cast and crew after it was taken from the original. The kid looking for his birthday party, who later on becomes that the blue kid with like the druid outfit. So same thing. So both of those were added. The man in the tree, which is like real weird, real weird. The cat man, obviously. The sorcerer. The girl in the coffin. The zombies, and the only good thing, that witch in, like, the basement cave thing. Which looked good and was cool. But shouldn't have been there because, you know, none of that stuff should have been there. Just saying. So, in the, so going through the events of the film, the pulsating 
stone coffin in the beginning is really cool looking and a really awesome way to kind of start the film. It kind of gives this kind of creepy vibe, this foreboding, and it's a cool visual just because of like how it's moving and the ground moves around it as well. So I, I quite like that. I did dig how they kind of just like walk right into things with the film initially, even with the newer stuff added. Like it felt random and weird, but it was like in a fun way. But then as that kind of random weird stuff just kept happening throughout the film, it then felt annoying, which was all those things that were added after the fact. Uh, the dialogue seems kind of disconnected from the actual film a lot of the times, and most of it ends up being the stuff that had been added to the film. Uh, some of it ends up being original to it. So overall dialogue a little bit rough, but yeah, mainly a problem with the newer stuff. <laughs> Once again, what the hell with the Catman? What the hell? Like, it's a dumb concept in the first place when you just say it, and then when you start working on it and legitimately do it, it's an even worse concept. I just cannot stress how bad this Catman is. The dude with the puppet may have been my actual favorite character. Um, although the puppet didn't have as much of a role in it as I wanted to. I think the whole time they were going through the house, when he was going through the house, he should have had the puppet and been doing things with it. That would have been fun. But I understand for some people it would have just been a little too over the top, a little too goofy. So There are a bunch of quick cuts in this film that feel really odd and disorienting. That happens quite a few times. Um, and it really, like, it, it gets disorienting because it's like quick cut, quick cut, quick cut, quick cut, quick cut. And you're just like, what am I seeing? Like, what is, what is happening right now? Can we focus for a little bit here? And from what I understand from that article I read, that had a lot to do with the financier. He was really big into doing, like, let's get to this quicker. Let, let's cut the time down and, and, and get to this quicker, get to that quicker. Like, he loved the idea of quick cuts and really forced that issue, which... Is, is dumb. Obviously, this person's not a director. Not a director. Uh, the headstone popping up and then the name being, like, emblazoned on it for that dude, Lewis Wilson, outside in the beginning. That was cool. I really liked that. Um, lots of fun. There's going to be a lot of me just pointing out, I like that, I like that, because there's really no story here. There's no subtext. It's just a crazy film. If you keep... Here's a great quote. If you keep talking, I'm going to fix your ass. What does that even mean? That's just another thing about, like, the dialogue. And then to that, because it's from the character Duke, why is Duke so immediately hostile in this film? He's hostile towards everything and everyone from the get-go. Like, this guy just has a bad day every day is what it seems like. So it, it just makes him, like, this wacky, over-the-top, weird character. And then that's what ends up uh, eventually going to the part where I think it's Dave is the other character. He gets into a fist fight with, which seems like it's kind of out of nowhere, but Hey, whatever. Um, whatever. So one of the, one of the scenes I really liked was, were the dirt creatures that emerged from the basement and then how they took care of them with, you know, opening that giant wine cask and then kind of like dissolving, which looked cool. The dissolving looked really cool and the dirt creatures looked really cool. And I really liked that scene. But all the farts that were going on actually made me laugh. I kind of, you know, on a rewatch, I think I'll appreciate the fart aspect of it more. Apparently, that's another thing that the financier insisted on being in the film. Were all these farts going on during that scene? They said that um, one of the, I think it was one of the directors, original directors, uh, was quoted as saying that, like, he just had this thing about, like, this base toilet humor that he loved. So he really wanted to work in, like, farts into the film so random who is this dude but i like that scene uh what's with the characters multiple characters deciding to just attempt to drink booze while they're trying to explore this house like duke does it and then another guy was that billy i can't remember all their names he he does it too and both of them like they drink it and then they spit it out it's so weird uh the part where Linda and Duke are arguing, okay, there, there's a part where Linda and Duke are arguing, and uh, Duke is on the right side of the screen, and Linda's on the left side of the screen, and then all of a sudden it cuts real quick, and it switches, and Duke's on the left, and Linda's on the right, and it's this moment of like, what, like, what just happened? So I, I literally stopped and rewound, and sure enough, that's what happens, it's like they just switch sides, that's a continuity issue. That's an editing error. Like, 
it's so weird. Like, it's jarring. And it, just like having all those quick cuts, it's like this jarring, disorienting thing that happens with the film. And you're just like, what the hell just happened? I love the scene with the little green creature that attacks Adrian in, like, that bedroom. Uh, although that's one of those scenes where they keep doing a bunch of these quick cuts and that kind of like disorients you and kind of messes up the scene. Had it been kind of longer takes, it would have been a lot better. But overall, I like the look of that creature. I like the idea of that creature. I like that scene and how she ends up like crushing it under the boudoir and the blood coming out. Uh, that's a fun one. <sighs> like I just wrote, just, just they someone had a heart on for this cat man and they just shoehorned him in to every area that they could they like literally all he does is creep around the house and like listen at doors i mean it's it's well adrian's face melt scene really cool looked really good it looked like it was kind of like a stop motion type deal i i like that one uh i i already talked about liking the witch in the basement actually looked good the only good thing that those newer cast and crew actually did and then I was thinking, why does the old sorcerer talking through Carol's body when she's all like messed up looking sound like he's talking through a PVC pipe? Like that's literally what it sounds like. It's kind of weird. Like I understand it. I guess I understand it to a degree that he's like speaking through a conduit basically. So maybe it will sound different. Like that's okay-ish. But then when the new cast and crew came in with the actual actor who is the sorcerer they replicated that voice thing a little bit and it just doesn't make sense like why would that just be his default voice it makes sense if it's the, his voice like through someone because that's like a magical thing that could change his voice but why would he just sound like that like poor, poor choice a lot of poor choices the grim reaper creature in this looks really good and i love the touch of those red glowing eyes and as you can see he's featured on there uh prominently and also that green the green creature i was talking about back there yeah really cool dig it the work they put into the giant spider woman and the guy getting drained of his insides is really impressive and actually i think that might be my favorite scene of the whole film that's really cool when she starts like having the legs come out of her and her face is changing and then she like jams her like sucker thing into the guy and it just like he just like implodes like everything just like shrinks shrinks down really good i was very impressed with that scene and that's what i'm saying like there's some really cool entertaining stuff in here that but the financier just killed this film it could have been so much better and i understand that like he ended up getting kind of mad because it was a situation where they ended up needing more money than they originally asked for. It ended up taking more time to shoot than they had originally said. And things just kept getting, like, bumped, bumped, bumped. But, I mean, you have to understand, if you're going to be a financier, like, do you want a good product or do you want it done based on what people said initially? I don't know. Uh, the explosion of the Grim Reaper creature when he falls off the building was overkill. Like, I, I, I understand, like, cool, have an explosion, but it was, like, way too big of an explosion. It just felt like, okay, that's very overstated. What the heck? Uh, the shot of the guy's shadow carrying the axe, I think that was the character Dave, uh, where he's, like, upstairs, and it's, like, the shot of, like, the staircase and the wall, and it shows, like, his shadow, like, coming out of a door with the axe and then, like, turning and coming down the steps. That shot looked really good. It was very well composed, very well lit looked really cool that shadow shot amazing um so basically what's going on in here this is where it dawned on me when i was watching the film that carol is possessed by the sorcerer so why do we then have these added scenes of the actual sorcerer there it feels so disconnected you know like the whole concept of him possessing carol is that he's not there like it's from beyond the grave basically so then to have him physically be there which is like, where is he in the house? And why is stuff happening with his bride at the same time? Like, it's all so disconnected. It doesn't make sense. It, it should have been left alone. Just doesn't work. Uh, the zombie scene at the end, which was all from the new cast and crew, at times was okay, but for the most part, it was it just took too long. It was way too long and drawn out. It got very, very boring very fast. And then um, it just, you know, goes to an ending 
that's just not good. Like it is, it just ends with this severe flop, especially when the bride gets picked up by this random dude in a car and is trying to get away and then realizes, Oh my gosh, it's the cat man. And I was just like, for someone like me, of course, of course, that's how we end the film. It's the cat man because it's always the damn cat man. Ugh, I like cats. Look, I love cats. I have a cat. I'm all about cats. I have a shirt that says best cat dad ever. I hate this cat man. I don't like everything cats. Just saying. So once again, the original concept seems like what would have really worked for this, this film. A simple story of a group exploring a creepy weird house and creatures showing up. They should have just put a one hour film out. They said it was like 90% done. They should have just gone with the 90% done and just put it out as was. It would have been fine. Would have been better than what we ended up getting here. And I really think that Vinegar Syndrome should have put that cut on here because they didn't. But I'm not mad at them because, you know, they have the documentaries and the commentary on there, which I'm going to dig into. I'm very excited about. So the strength of the film obviously just really lies in the practical effects. The practical effects moments are what you're really looking forward to. And other than that witch in the basement cave, it's all from the original cast and crew. Damn this financier. And damn you, Jeannie and Anne. You dipshits. Terrible. God. It just makes me so mad because, like, there's a good, fun, entertaining film here. And I don't, like, I don't think I can watch it again as it is because there's just too too much of that added crap that's just that. It's crap. And I can't sit through it. It's so distracting. I guess I could just, like, you know, fast forward and watch it that way. I feel like I need to cut this myself just for my personal viewing. Like, put it on my computer and, like, put it in iMovie or something and cut pieces out of it just just for me. <laughs> just saying um anyway that's all i have to say about it i would love to talk to some other people down in the comments about their feelings on spookies and what they did and didn't like and you know differing opinions because maybe people love it as is that's fine you know we can talk about that so uh this is one i have to rate two ways obviously so as a film in the pantheon of all films i mean this is obviously like a I'm going to go one star because the practical effects are pretty good. So in, I won't go half. I'm going to go one star on it. In the sense of so bad it's good film, it's hard. I got to put it at a 2.5. Uh, I, I would put it higher if it wasn't for all the stuff that was added by the second cast and crew. Um, if it wasn't for that, I think I could go as high as like a three and a half or something. Because, man, those practical effects, it's just fun. But, um, yeah. So two and a half on that. But anyway, uh, thanks everyone for checking this out. I really appreciate it. Do me a really quick favor. I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Um, I really, really appreciate every single time someone does that. It means a lot to me. And it takes you literally a second. So if you like anything I've ever done on this channel, that's your way to repay me. Also hit the notification bell if you're going to do that. Because then that way you know when I'm putting up new videos or when I'm doing live streams, all that stuff. Uh, but regardless, thank you. And another thing real quick, if people could, um, tweet at email, whatever you need to do, um, Joe Bob Briggs and Darcy, the male girl, and tell them that they should cover spookies. Cause I think the last drive-in could do a bang up job showing and dissecting and talking about the backstory on spookies. That would be a lot of fun. So do that. But anyway, thanks for checking this out and until next time, keep it brutal.